our operations needs have changed as well. And here to talk about that with us today is Kapil Singhal, who is here with us from the Arison Group. Please welcome Kapil Singhal. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Okay, while the presentation fires up and the coffee settles in, or tea. Right, uh, good afternoon and uh, welcome to the session. The, uh, the marketing guys wanted to call it uh, OSS BSS in the IT world or internet world and I said, let's look at IP. It's just a transition from T and P. But really what we're looking at is uh, the agility and the speed that's going to hit us, the scale that's going to hit us uh, coming from the internet world. So a lot of good learning uh, from, from that industry and, and the ruggedness and the resilience of uh, classic telecoms networks and how the two kind of come together. So that's going to be the theme of the session today as we look to explore uh, how networks and IT come together uh, in what we see as an all IP environment going forward. Um, most of you would find this very familiar. Uh, my three-year-old uh, the other day took a picture frame and was trying to do a pinch on Zoom. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, after, after like trying, struggling for 30 seconds, literally wanted to break it or just leave it. So imagine the other, other case when, when they're on their iPads and they're trying to do, work something and things not working. Uh, so the expectation of service management, so expectation of... Uh, basic quality of service is kind of starting pretty young these days. As I grew up and kind of you could barely make phone calls international without a two second delay or an echo. So the, the experiences are changing, the expectations are changing, and you know, it will be interesting to see uh, how the subscriber will look like uh, in years to come and what their expectations will be. Multiple devices, uh, multiple networks, uh, multiple solutions. Uh, scale is uh, beginning to get to all of us, uh, whether it's information scale, uh, whether it's big data scale, whether it's uh, the amount of filters we want to put in the networks, uh, the amount of information we want to recall or not recall, so to speak. And uh, I think the last, uh, the last few conversations I've had with at least three top CIOs in the world uh, in telcos, uh, you know, almost everybody's come back and said, uh, you know, we thought it's going to grow at 2x, but it's gone at 15x, and this is unstructured data. Uh, we thought we know what our structured data is uh, and how we're going to manage it, but what do I do with my unstructured data, and how do I correlate the two? So scale is becoming a big issue. We are beginning to see it very closely. Um, more on that as we kind of move on into the presentation. I'm sure this is a kind of run-of-the-mill industry slide, you know, how does technology move uh, from the PST and days all the way to LTE. But the two things uh, which I really want to emphasize on this slide, one which is on the slide and one which is not on the slide, and I think was highlighted this morning uh, in the Verizon talk. Uh, plug and play is the bit I really want to talk about here, which is, you know, in a world where uh, networks are going to change or interchange or people hop from uh, from TV to, to device uh, to a, a cable to a wireless network or a Wi-Fi network and in a world where you know uh, service experience becomes um, the, the bigger imperative so to speak uh, how do you ensure that you know the, the the things that a subscriber uses typically a device or, an, or a service experience uh, you can provide plug and play experiences around it. So I'm thinking remote uh, software management, you know, self uh, identification in networks, and, and how do you kind of start pushing intelligence down to the device itself or down to the entities uh, or the in premise equipments that, that we have around us? That's the one thing which is, uh, you know, which we find very intriguing as a conversation as the, as the scale improves. Uh, the second one is, which is not mentioned here, is, is organizational complexity and change management. So as we heard this morning on the Verizon presentation, and, and I think quite a few others have uh, mentioned it, including the last, uh, the last speaker at MDS, how do you get the marketing, IT, and uh, you know, technology offices to come and work together? Uh, that change management, uh, that whole organizational shift 
Uh, very recently, we had uh, a paper come out from Business Strategy Review from London Business School, and it talked about the diminishing role of a CIO. And while it was not very well received by a lot of, uh, not in the CIO community, but it, it's kind of beginning to look at what is the role. Is, is CTIO the new role? Is CMIO the new role? Or is, is it CTMIO? We kind of begin to look at uh, organizational uh, challenges, the structural challenges, and you know how do we how do we work that change management uh, through the right process definitions. And some of these we are doing right now with uh, with both tier one and tier two operators, more tier one. Um, and uh, the, the studies, the research, the outcomes are just, uh, just amazing. So it doesn't kind of yield itself to a technology play only. There's a people play. I think this morning uh, we had a conversation, right? I was thinking it takes about six to 12 months. I was uh, nicely guided, possibly 20 years, some people have been waiting. So <laughs> let's see uh, what's actually going to come. Uh, one another piece which kind of is now becoming popular or has become popular thanks to Apple and thanks to YouTube and Google is uh, the whole service experience design, the, the traditional OSS BSS design did, did have a customer piece, but it didn't, it was a one-way system. It was, it was half duplex, so to speak. It didn't allow the customer to bring back their, uh, their ideas, their philosophies, their inputs back into the equation of the service. So that's another piece that we see uh, is changing the way how you would want to, uh, and I heard terms like near real time, I heard terms like uh, in-service. Those, those terms become more, more and more important and relevant as you start bringing the customer more into the equation. So that's just to set the context on you know, what we're gonna talk about today and uh, Addison uh, and Innovation Services, Systems Integrator, Process Consultant, uh, Change Consultant. These are the three or four pillars that we see um, as the critical points of transformation as we move from a all telco world to a all IP world. And uh, most of these have been discussed during the day in different formats, in different presentations. But um, I, I have a feeling they've either been too biased on the IT side or the network side. And I think I'm encouraging all of us to think more how the two come together. So, uh, you know, service management, right? If you're, to, uh, if you're moving from, uh, from, your, from your car into your home and you want to move from your wireless network to a Wi-Fi network, how are we looking to manage that service? For example, um, quality of experience, uh, customer experience management. A uh, lot of people talking about putting probes in their networks. Many struggling to figure out how do I still get my performance and get the network's data without degrading the performance. Still a big challenge, uh, no matter which CTO you talk to today. Um, data information and you know, big data, the big buzzword, uh, we don't see quality of experience and big data kind of living in two silos anymore. We see those coming together. Some, some very good case studies uh, this afternoon that we heard from Turkcell and also from Do, uh, which kind of make you believe that yes, it's all kind of coming together. Testing, um, heard that first thing in the morning, very important piece. Uh, the mindset shift from I'm gonna test this white box or I'm gonna test this device to I'm gonna test a service is, uh, is becoming uh, pretty pervasive in the industry. So we worked with, uh, with, a, with a European uh, MS, MSO uh, and we looked at how do you make this zero touch flow, right? A, a provisioning system or a service activation system and how do you get your order to cash without too much of a manual entry? And what started off as a CTO organization audit or a process audit ended up being a large CTO plus CIO uh, organization discussion and uh, very quickly the CEO and the CFO all got involved to realize that you know there's no point wasting three to four days to actually um, you know get your orders through or get your uh, systems provisioned you know how much automation can you receive can you achieve so fundamentally at least uh, we are beginning to see people are coming to terms and realizing um, uh, and embracing the, the next generation service enablers in their own environments. And these are pretty complex, large, mature, sophisticated systems that we are working with. But, you know, again, the siloed architecture will just not work. 
So another pictorial definition, you know, how we move from uh, a multi-network environment to something which is more uh, service orientated, and uh, I think we've covered that in, in some detail. Uh, as I said, customer experience management so far has been seen as, uh, you know, probing network data, or I'll get the data from my customer BSS systems or my CRN systems, and I'll try and do some analytics around it. Um, really what we are what we are beginning to see are these trends and I'll kind of take some time to just go through uh, go through some of these uh, I talked about unstructured and so-called semi-structured data uh, especially in the machine to machine world you know how do you introduce new platforms new technologies to make it foolproof in a four dollar ARPU as we heard this morning uh, touched on probes we've touched on mobile devices um, S smart analytics, you know, where does it evolve? Does it come from the network? Does it come from IT? You know, how do you, how do you put the two together? Uh, I grew up with a store and forward kind of an architecture, and now it's like process and forward. So in-memory in processing, because you're looking at petabytes of data perhaps when it comes to semi-structured data, how do you do that and how do you still make it relevant enough for the IT workflows to embrace such a data coming, let's say, from the networks itself, right? So how do you how do you combine the two to create what I call a real uh, customer experience management engine? Uh, whether it's omni-channel, whether it's customer segmentation uh, on demographics, on location, on geographies, right? All of those, uh, it's not a complex problem to uh, uh, to envisage, but it's it's really complex to solve. And that, again, takes uh, a whole lot of organizational intent to bring it together. Uh, service fulfillment, clearly, that's where we are driving. That's where uh, quality of experience is. And for us, that um, starts from the network and goes into the IT workflows. That, uh, it's, it's, it's not just a case of uh, measuring a KPI or an SLA, let's take an enterprise uh, customer in, in this case, uh, who's, who's only signed up for a particular level of service, and in stream, you're trying to access more data due for, a, let's say, a, VP, uh, a video conference call. How do you enable your networks to uh, allow that data uh, pipe to be enabled so that you can get better bandwidth? There are multiple solutions that do it, but how real-time or near real-time uh, are they today and how and where will they go tomorrow as the IP kind of devices uh, pro proliferate around us? We've, uh, we've, we've covered, uh, you know, various parts of networks and IT, but, you know, they, uh, one of the, one of the uh, CIOs who I who was working with said, you know, network is the database. And that realization has been has been pretty slow, but it's it's coming to uh, it's 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 coming up um, more and more. And you know how do you how do you create a predictive analytics uh, solution which takes the inputs from the network and goes into the scales of the IT workflows and the business workflows and makes that uh, makes that happen? Means for us, analytics is a is a layer which can be run as an overlay solution. Um, over any network, uh, potentially. The complexity is not in analyzing the data, but in actually putting the data back into the IT workflows, back into the business workflows and the business engine rules, because that's where you're going to get better decision-making capability from a business front. This used to be uh, the case, uh, still is the case in many, many operators and many carriers we work with. Uh, and it's by design, it's, it's the way uh, organizations were structured. And it's also the way the contracts have been structured um, in terms of uh, bringing in new equipment, bringing in new services, and getting those kind of in-service tested. Uh, it's taken us a lot of time, it's taken the industry a lot of time to work uh, together to move to a construct which allows service level testing and service level assurance uh, as against uh, siloed testing and siloed assurance. Uh, no matter how much you test, 
the outcome has to have a level of bugs and failure rate, which is what everybody is trying to diminish. And the more you can do before it goes in production, uh, the, the lower the costs are for, for any service that we launch. So to summarize, uh, service management, uh, quality of experience, and customer management kind of intertwining with big data, uh, and finally, end-to-end -end testing. These are the tenets or the points of uh, transformation that we see today as we start looking from the network side going into the IT side. Thank you. We have time for a couple of questions for Kapil. I have one. Yes. It's, it's a pleasure to see the word testing showing up in so many of the presentations today because uh, too often in the rush to get things to market, we, we um, well, maybe don't give it all of its due. Um, what can you say to us about testing today that may be different than what we've seen over the last 20 years? What innovations um, are present in the testing environment that we can take advantage of? That's a very good question. Uh, testing used to be a very labor-intensive, uh, people-oriented, uh, demand spike-driven uh, business. Yes. Uh, over the last, I would say, four or five years, we've seen uh, a whole lot of processes coming in which uh, allow a service-driven approach to tie in the test case right from uh, the IT and the network all the way to the consumer. So. All those silos that we talked about are using the same test case, for example. So these are simple things. Create a test repository, but make sure the whole organization works across it. That's one. The second one is a whole lot of IP gets generated. So if I look at AT&T, Verizon, Telstra, Vodafone, the amount of test cases, the test repositories that get generated even in-house, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's worth patenting uh, in, in, in many cases. And it kind of just lies there as freebie. So people are really not using it or not worrying about it. Again, nature of the industry, very contractor-driven, very uh, variable rate, uh, you know, labor-driven. So, uh, so we looked at uh, taking some of those IP and plowing it back into this to the industry so that you start making it more efficient. The third thing is devices, right? So bulk of the testing is moving from networks to devices, and devices by nature can be tested in remote environments. So another sense of efficiency that can be brought in. Answer your question in another way, uh, by definition, testing was seen as a cost, not as an enabler. So the efficiency in the market has been more around making that cost lower, but driving more assurance and more service quality. Great, thank you very much. Any other questions for Kapil? Kapil Singhal, our group. Thank you so Thanks. very much. Thanks.